in uh, serving the Burgio and the and the uh, and the Ramia, Ramia area, the coastal communities, and the peaceful communities, uh, which serves Port Bass, Godboy Valley, and the coastal communities there, and also the Bay St. George Coalition Band Violence. We have been around. Um, when we get together, we realize that we've been doing this work probably since. Now I'm going to age myself. <laughs> the late 80s, early 90s, in terms of what we call violence prevention and working together to build health, healthy and safe communities. So the HELP Committee has been around, I'm thinking, since the early 90s. I know the Bay St. George right? uh, Coalition and Violence has been, been around since 92, and Peaceful Communities has a very long history. So we've been doing a lot of that work, working with our partners um, and building, you know, helping to build us as safe and healthy communities. Quite often, you know, we're always working in silos and really are not connected as well as we should be. One of the things that we started, um, I was talking about eight years ago, was a focus on our seniors. And as I'm saying that, I'm probably a senior now too. <laughs> Over the last eight years, <laughs> um, so I've grown up. <laughs> And uh, so we focus on older persons, seniors. Um, and one of the events that we do in each, in each of our areas, and um, some of you may be in, been a part of um, either Lunch and Learns or a seniors event, um, World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that, create a little bit of history on um, World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, but that's one of the, the highlights of our year. We always uh, always have, a, have a special events in our areas around that. Uh, yeah, just a little bit about it. Basically, World of Elder Abuse Awareness Day, which we all kind of name we add. So I know we, we use a lot of acronyms around. We go around, oh, it's we add day, it's we add this, but basically it's World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Not as one of our politicians happened to make a, a faux pas one day and call it World Elder Abuse Day. He forgot the awareness. <laughs> Very important piece. <laughs> Very important piece. We've never let him live it down. Uh, but yeah, so since 2002, the United Nations came together and kind of deemed June the 15th as World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. So internationally, it is recognized um, on that day. And the whole purpose of World Elder Abuse Awareness Day is to obviously bring in that partnership, which Bernice is just talking about, bring in awareness. A lot of time we have a disconnect between the younger generation and our older generation. There's such an experience. And sometimes the whole idea of that day is to just present information. Um, but we've got a whole, a whole slew of it over here that's certainly uh, for you guys to take. But it's basically just bringing in some different topics that are more targeted as we grow older. Some of the things that we probably would need to know more information on. Whether we've done um, you know, um, life directives, we've done um, cyber, even just cyberbullying and, and online dating, and we had a conversation. We had in the fall, we had a, a large respect aging uh, conference, basically centered around our seniors, and we've discussed, you know, safe sex over 50. These are things that are brought to attention as we grow. So the World Elder Abuse Awareness Day was more or less for that: is to identify the mistreatment uh, of our seniors and of our older people as we age, right? So on that day, particularly, even though obviously we, we should be making it aware every day, it's that particular day that we all come together, we bring our members in from the community, we have a great party, we have a big celebration, but we'll also bring in a lot of the services and programs that are out there that a lot of our seniors are not even aware of. Whether it's a, you know, a, a cost savings program through Newfoundland and Labrador, um, light and power. Yeah. Whether it's um, being able to take avail of some services through Service Canada, and I understand you had a presentation this morning. So we bring all those types of services together under one roof, and like I said, it's, it's just a celebration. We've done different types of formats, like Bernice mentioned, which has been lunch and learns and things like that. So the whole idea is to recognize June the 15th worldwide. And Canada has been becoming an international leader in being able to recognize and to make sure that our seniors are being well taken care of. They are not being mistreated. And that's one of the things, like I said, we were trying to figure out exactly how long we've been doing it. But that's pretty much. Um, so if you hear anybody going around, oh, it's we at. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. It's World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, June the 15th. So mark it on your calendars, go out and celebrate. Mm -hmm.
enjoy that day, right? So usually what our three local committees do, the Health Committee in Peaceful and Bay St. George, they'll actually plan an event. Uh, one of the things we do in Bay St. George is our annual Seniors Kitchen Party. And we have anywhere from 100 to 125 seniors from all over the Bay St. George area that come together. Uh, we actually have display booths, so RCMP Victim yeah. Services would set up a booth, Community Education Network, Light and Power actually comes and sets up booth, Service Canada, so everybody sets up information booths. Uh, we provide a, a lunch. Uh, our local 50-plus uh, uh, dancers uh, come, they, they do dance, we actually have a, a, a local band comes in, so they have a dance and everything afterwards, and we have a guest speaker as well, so it's a whole day. Focusing around the celebration of seniors and, and us as we as we age, older persons, but also in information sharing. That's right. So it just combines the two. Because quite frankly, and we talked about that the first year, who wants to come to discuss uh, elder abuse? You know, if you put that out to people, it's a very difficult topic. There might be a small group that would come together to talk about that, but if it's done in a format that's a celebration of us as we get older and also an opportunity to share information and be able, if we are in a situation uh, where we need information, where we may be, um, you know, got something as simple as, I mean, I know a senior picked up the phone and that stupid scam at Revenue Canada got scammed by them. You know, where do you go for help if you're scammed? Because we were all taught to be very respectful on the phone and somebody trying to scam us, right? And so those types of things, so that's, you know, that's financial abuse that we build and can happen with a family member, it can happen to so many of us. And, you know, let's face it, we're all, as we age, we, we, sometimes we, all, we need the support of other people. We, we do that, we need the support of each other and our community. Um, so we won't be isolated and won't um, end up being victimized by abuse either by a family member or through a scam or, you know, somebody in the community um, taking advantage. Um, of, the, of us as we age, so it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's you know it's a really uh, a really great day. But we always combine the, cel the celebration with the information, and we find that so useful. So whether like I said, uh, and food. I mean, if you're a new, well, I mean, just the cookies. I mean, you know, why did we come today? It was for the cookies. We want to say thank you, ladies, for the soup and the cookies and the, oh, yeah. the dessert. It was great. It was great. So, you know, when you look at that, it's, it, is so, it is so important, and it's not an us and them. Like, I'm 54 years old, so, that's right. I mean, you know, I'm just, you know, we I'm pretty well there. I get the seniors just kill me, but right? they brought in the yeah. Community Youth Network. The young volunteers from the youth from the high school have called me, and they're up on the dance floor, and they're dancing with, with our seniors, and i got to tell you, the ones that sit down first are the young ones. Yeah. <laughs> we can't, they sit down first, and they can't keep up. Yeah. But like I said, it, it is a day of, of just celebration, but it, it's getting that information out there, right? And letting them know the resources that's in their community. A lot of times you'll hear them, I didn't know that was out there, right? Yeah. So it's just making sure that, that that's awareness is, is there, right? So we can actually, in terms of the history of the Southwestern Coalition, I mentioned the three local committees. And our local committees have been on the go since the early 90s for sure, right? I mean, even before that. So coming together, recognizing that there is a difficult issue to talk about, you know, violence and abuse prevention, but it needs to be talked about and we need to build those safe and caring communities. And we all can take responsibility for that, each of us. And of course, we, you know, as seniors need to be involved, as older persons in our community need to be involved in ensuring the community is safe. Uh, for everybody and welcoming and inviting and supportive. So, um, so we came together actually, it was 2006 and the Violence Prevention Initiative was announced. So the provincial government announced what, the, what was called the VPI, the Violence Prevention Initiative, and they were looking at setting up regional coordinating committees. So they decided there was, they were going to set up one committee for Western area and that was going to be in Cornerbrook and that was going to serve all the Western area. So no, 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 he said, no, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'll stand here in Southwestern, <laughs> right? We already have three very active committees in Southwestern Newfoundland, and we want to come together and form our own committee. So we formed a Southwestern Coalition to end violence, and we work together. So our three, and we're able to get funding from the, the provincial government. They give us funding annually, so the, lots of times, and Kelly can attest to this a little bit because you're with the health committee, there is funding given to the health committee to support the work that they do. And there's funding given to the committee in Bay St. George and funding given to the peaceful communities through the Southwestern Coalition. So we're able to access funding and get it to the communities to do the various events and various activities that happen 
on an annual basis. So get involved with your health committee. <laughs> I know they're looking for new members, aren't they, Kelly? Yes, all the time. Yes. <laughs> so I didn't know if you wanted to mention any of the activities that have happened this year in terms well, of the health committee. Well, we did the Fest. Yes. That was a yeah. big one this year. Yeah. And we did the social tea. Yes. Soup and sandwiches at the senior yes. complex. Yes, we did that. It's, I'm just new myself. Self, yeah. Sure. yeah. And uh, Kathy Cutler has been involved, right? And uh, Ada was involved for many, many years, and they're part of the Southwestern. So the Southwestern Coalition in Violence is made up of three members from each of the committees, and that's how the Southwestern is formed. So we get together, and then we're able to get the money and the, and the programs and the services out to the committee. Our biggest thing is the awareness raising, right? So it's information and awareness raising and through the local committee. So your, your contact here in Burgio would be the health committee. And uh, we basically, Southwestern, we do the proposal writing, the financial management of it, and get the funding out to the, commu the, uh, the, the communities, right? So we're able to do that. So really encourage you guys to get involved in your local health committee. Um, it's, nice, it's nice to have people of all ages, right? From, from youth uh, and from all ages involved in that. So that's sort of our, our spiel on I'm Southwestern. Say, my couple of years of being with Southwestern, one thing I have discovered that Virgil is quite proud of is their Christmas float. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. More beginning, I keep hearing year and year. So, always looking, I'm sure, for new ideas, right? Yeah. Yes. So, all those things, and in terms of, because sometimes the discussion, when we talk about abuse against older persons, uh, you know, abuse and violence is not an easy topic to discuss, but it has, it, it has to be discussed, and we have to be open about it. Um, a lot of us around the table grew up in a time when you didn't talk about that. You just did not, you know, you didn't, you didn't talk about anything that happened, whatever type of abuse it was, you, did, you just didn't talk about it. Um, and now we know that that's not a healthy way to deal with it and only perpetuates the cycle of abuse. So that cycle continues unless we're able to talk about it and, and uh, help people that are in those situations. Um, and what I find is that by reaching out to others, especially as we get older, if we look at what ways can we help ourselves and help others as seniors, not be victims of abuse. Karina talked about cyber violence. A lot of us, as we get older, we're on, you know, we're on Facebook, and if our, you know, if we are uh, married or in a relationship, and our partner, you know, this is the reality of it, a sad reality, our partner dies, passes away, or there's a divorce, and we are, you know, back in the day game. How do you safely, right? How do you safely do online dating? without being a victim of, right? And of course, I see that kind of reaction, no, I don't want my date. But the reality of it is, some people do. So people my age are talking to older people to say these are the things that you have to be really cautious of. If you're going to meet someone online, then you have to make sure that if you're going to meet them, you meet them in a you know, safe place, in a public space, and you're, you know, you're very, very cautious. Because the reality of it is a different world than we grew up, right? Yeah, it's a very, very different world than when we grew up. So the, 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 uh, yeah, it was very interesting. <laughs> Someone had told me that their 80-year-old mom had was, you know, on, on whatever, whatever site there is for older, a couple of different sites for older, uh, older people, 50 plus. And uh, she, she went on and went. So of course she was lecturing her mom. It was like the reverse role. You're lecturing. <laughs> she was lecturing her mom on how you gotta, do, you know, how you gotta keep yourself safe and don't. Be, you know, sucked in by this and that. You you know, you really got to be careful, right? So it was really an interesting process. How you you talk about it, right? You, you have, you're able to talk about it without judgment, because I think that's the other thing too, is without without the judgment. Yeah. So it's really really good. Uh, you know, it's great like that. I think um, one of the things too, as we age, as Newfoundlanders, right off the bat, we're born friendly. <laughs> uh, I took my mom for a little road trip this weekend and I was amazed. Every stop we made, she had to tell them where we were going, who we were going to see. You know them, this is their name, this is where I'm from. And I'm like, all I kept thinking was, we are so friendly. We, that's who we are by nature. But I mean, as we grow, so we, we come across somebody who we automatically are trusting. And unfortunately, the world has those out there that can't and shouldn't be trusted. And then they're taking advantage of that vulnerability and, and that comfortability. So I think even just being aware that not everybody out there is going to be our friend, right? And I think those are the types of things that underneath the coalition that 
we try and try to offer information in that about, right? And one of the things as we get older, um, sometimes isolation. Isolation is a big factor, right? Yeah. So we have to be, yeah, we have to be really careful. Um, we find that some seniors, you know, stay, you, you get isolated, don't go out a whole lot, and sometimes that, that makes us more vulnerable. If we're not, if we, don't, if we don't have a lot of friends, we don't have a, a strong support system, it can make us more vulnerable as we age. So often we'll see older seniors, right, in their 70s and 80s that are very isolated, and because of that, they can be taken advantage of and, uh, um, you know, and be victims of, uh, of abuse. Um, the other issue that we talk about a lot is different types of abuse, and I'm just wondering, have people been involved in discussions about what the different types of abuse are? Yeah. We haven't gotten that far yet, that's what okay. I was going to ask you. Yeah. We to lead into that and we talk yes. about the different types of abuse. So. Yeah. Um, we actually have, because mm -hmm. part of it is a really, really good uh, resource that I wanted to, to share with people, uh, and it's Respect Aging. So there's actually a, a series of workshops that were developed through the Women's Policy Office of Violence Prevention Initiative, which focuses on the different types of abuse and violence. So this is available actually online, and we've got some more information here. Uh, and we did an actually a, a conference. Every two years we do a regional conference, and our last conference last fall focused um, we called it our Respect Aging Conference and focused on prevention of abuse of older persons. So we actually did a workshop here, we actually had a discussion um, about uh, a topic which we thought we were, we were concerned that people wouldn't, but it was, uh, were scared. It, was a new, it was a new book that came out provincially and it was basically about after, well, best sex ever after 50, so how to face it, yeah. So we, and we it were thinking, scared. oh, that's everybody, and we had, we had everybody from 50 to 90 years old in the room, and we had a really, really good discussion about it. And some people, you know, had, uh, you know, were, were you know, mar you know, married couples and had partnerships. Other people were single, or other people had started dating again. But it was just that discussion about, because it is, if we look back, we didn't have those discussions as young people. We just, it wasn't a time, we didn't grow up in a time when you had those discussions, you know, about healthy sexuality and those types of things, but it's safe, you know, keeping yourself safe and not to be, a, a, you know, a, a victim of, uh, of abuse of any kind. So we had a really discussion around that and we did some really, really good workshops helping people to understand how complex abuse can be. If I say the word abuse or violence, what's the first thing that comes to mind for people? You know, if I said someone was a victim of violence, what would come to mind, or a victim of abuse? Physical. Physical. Like a punch, or a hit, or a slap, right? What other types of abuse are there? Verbal. Verbal abuse, right? So that would include like putting people down, for example, repeatedly, right? Doing, right? So verbal abuse. Is there any other type people can mention? Psychological. Yeah. You guess Gaslighting. Oh, that's right here. Gaslighting. Yeah. Oh, gaslighting. Yes. Yeah. I mean, serious. That would certainly be a physical, right? A type of physical abuse. Financial is another piece. And we've had certainly had a number of seniors that have been um, victims of financial abuse. Yes. And that could be by a stranger. That could be by someone that they didn't know. And I talked about the scam. And they're oh, I tell you, it makes me when people call and the, the, the scammers are just really, really, uh, um, it's a terrible thing for, for people to be victimized by that. But also, you know, family members, right? Family members or close, you know, people that we're close to uh, that we, we, you know, we think that wouldn't take advantage of that. So, you know, financial abuse, uh, it can be can be an issue for uh, for people as well. Um, so these, the resources that we have here today deals with the different types of abuse and understanding that a little more. So certainly um, there are people here in the community and, and we, can, we can certainly be involved if people would like. Uh, one of the workshops here, about 1.5 hours, you know, each of the workshop sessions. But what it does, it, it helps us to talk about the different types of abuse. What can we do? What can we do if we find ourselves in a position where we're a victim of violence or abuse, but how can we help other people in our community, right? 
how do you, you feel so helpless sometimes when you know someone is being taken advantage of or abused and we feel like we can't do anything or we shouldn't do anything? But it does kind of have a discussion about, uh, you know, about those things and about the different types of abuse. So there's a big, you know, it's not just physical. When we talk about abuse, it's not just physical. There are many, many different types of abuse. And it's very, uh, uh, in order to be able to help people and help ourselves, we have to be aware of that and have to be able to, to talk about that. Right? I think with one thing, the financial abuse is always the one that seems to be the trickiest. The physical abuse almost is black and white. Okay, yeah. if someone smacks me, I know that that's, I didn't invite that, so that's abuse, right? Uh, but I think the financial, a lot of times, especially um, as we grow older, it's wanting to help out our grandchild or help out this, and next thing you know, Chris swore I had an extra $20 in my wallet that seems to be gone after some, you know, little Johnny's been asking me for money. And a lot of times that thing, it, it kind of becomes a very gray line. And I think the financial abuse is the one that people don't recognize the most. And I think we have to be really careful with that, right? We have a lot of our seniors, too, that we have reports and we've been going through the communities. <clears throat> a lot of our seniors and elders have been um, sharing their stories. And they talk about, they know that their kids are addicted, so they're trying to help their kids. So what some of the elders and the seniors are doing is they're going to the doctors and getting these prescriptions for opiates and, and whatever. And in turn, they're trying to maintain their child or their grandchild's addiction by feeding them these pills, not knowing that, you know, you're still getting this prescription, and you're feeding them the pills, thinking you're doing a good thing in your mind because you're controlling it, but they're also still on the street. Yeah. And they're still going to get those meds. So I guess the concern, one of the concerns that has been raised is, you know, so we have a lot of these elders and seniors that are going through these prescriptions now to help with these kids because they want to manage this abuse. But you know, if, if they're seriously injured or hurt and they need medication themselves and they decide they need to go to a doctor because they have a broken hip, the doctor's going to say, well, it's 15 days ago I prescribed you 30 Percocet or 30 whatever. I'm sorry, we can treat you right now, but we can't give you a prescription for long term. Yes. So, I mean, you need to get that out there too, that I mean, they're setting themselves up for not being able to take care of themselves or for the health system to take care of them. You've got the added, you've got the added dimension there of addictions, right? Which adds another, another layer of there. So it's the emotional connection to a son or a daughter or a grandchild, right? The, the, to a family member that you're trying to help. So you're, uh, you know, as an older person, you're able to put yourself out there basically we always say never give your drugs to other people, right? Doesn't just appear. But you have that in trying to appease that person because they they do have they do have an addiction issue. What really that that and then you feel trapped as a vicious cycle. You know, what really we need then if we're in that position as an older person is we you know where do I go for help? So is there mental health and addictions, depending on how serious it is, they may then uh, the not having enough food, there might be other issues that are complex in there. Is it, you know, is there, you know, something that they need to talk to the RCP about? Where do they go in the community for, the, you know, for those services? And understanding the complexity of addiction is that they're, they're not helping their child or grandchild. They're not helping, which is hard for people to understand that they're not when there's a, when there's addiction. But support group there, that's that to me, to, for, for, for older persons to be able to talk about the reality of that, it's such a shameful thing. Addictions is such a shameful thing. But really, it's an addiction. You know, it's, it's no one chooses to be, and no one chooses to be an addict. You know, uh, so so those sorts of things. It's a support group and where to go for help. And you're not helping. You know, you're really not helping your child um, by feeding their addiction either through money or through drugs. Right. So to understand that um, and to know there are other people that are to support you. Right. To support you. Often is a, it's not talked about, and I think the first the first thing is to do is to talk about it, to be able to talk about it with other people. It's no easy solution. And another another thing that has come up in spiritual abuse is that we have a lot of of our elders that are now being taken care of by family members, but our elders are spiritual and they've gone to church, they have connection to different churches. So now, with my generation that would be taking care of the elders, um, 
I mean, some of us don't go to church, we don't practice, whatever, and some of us don't believe. So the elders are finding are having a hard time getting to church when the kids are saying, well, we don't believe in that, that's not what you don't need to go to church today. We need, we need to look at and explore that and recognize that as a form of abuse as well. I mean, you're holding that, their belief system and their need for that connection, especially in their older years when they're drawn closer to their religion or to their beliefs in, in the later years. Um, a lot of people don't recognize that as being a form of abuse. That's certainly, and that's talked about the irreligious or spiritual abuse, right? So not being able to, to worship in the way that, that you want to worship. Um, and again, that's why I, I always like the whole concept when I do seniors clubs and seniors groups to be able to support each other with that. Like even as we age, like you can be 55 years old and have had a lot of health issues, or you can be 80 years old and be very spry and very, so it's just in terms of being able to support each other and connect with each other as we grow older, because that isolation, because I'm just thinking of someone who perhaps is 75, 80 years old and who doesn't drive but who wants to go to church. I'm just thinking somewhere in the community, there's, an, there's another person, either younger or older, who's probably going to church that day, who could probably, right? So how do we, how do we stay connected? Because what I find, and we talked about that, it was so interesting. We had a panel of four mm -hmm. seniors, and they vary in age from probably 60 to 80. 60, yeah, 60 yeah. to 80. One of the key things that they talked about, what they feel has benefited them the most, is being involved in their community and volunteering as much as possible and helping other helping other seniors to stay engaged or whatever. So that was their big connection. As we get older, is sometimes our, our world gets smaller and smaller and smaller. We're very dependent on perhaps one just one or two family members or perhaps a personal care attendant and that and your your life gets so small. And when I think about the seniors clubs and the wonderful work that our seniors organizations do, how do we reach out? How do we reach out to those seniors that are isolated, right, as a, as a seniors organization? Because a lot of people, like when we have our seniors kitchen party, there's those of the people that are up and dancing, but there's people also who, because of, you know, physical, are in their wheelchairs, but they're tapping their, they're tapping their feet and this, uh, to be, you know, to, to socialize and to be there. We're all, right, it can happen to any of us as we get older, you know. I think one of my mm -hmm. most, most favorite memories of one of our, our WIA celebration, our senior kitchen parties, we had a um, local lady from the YMCA come over and she did Jive into the 50s yes. with them and she had the old music going. Yeah. She had them up dancing and this one lady, she was wheelchair bound. Yeah. And she was giving her. Yeah. She was going and dancing and the smile on her face had stuck with me because she and her uh, her personal care worker that was with her said to me after she said she counts down the days for this event. She absolutely loves coming out because they get to see and they'll bring them in from the um, the local senior home in the crossing from our long term care. They'll bring in a busload uh, of individuals coming in and they can't wait. They're fighting because you only have so many rooms, with so many seats in the bus, and apparently they're fighting <laughs> over to get in. And she's always saying, "I've been going since it started, and I'm going until I'm gone." Right? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, and she she just that smile, right? Yes. It's cold out there today. It's nice and sunny. It's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's so hot here. Huh? Yeah, it's cold. But we probably talked enough. I'm just wondering, you know, what do you feel? Is it, this is your community. I mean, there's certainly one of the things that I've always found is is to be to educate yourself, to understand complexity, and to be able to talk about it. Um, you know, so the so the, certainly the respect aging um, workshops are a great way, right? Um, and I, I mean, I I really like the whole idea of seniors helping seniors. That's right. And I mean, now I don't know. I'm not sure when seniors start. Since so 55, <laughs> 55 plus, self-identified. 50 plus, 50 plus. Most of the seniors clubs are 50 plus. So yep. uh, right. I, so you know, those are but but for those to, to help each other. So how do we help ourselves, and how do we help each other? Uh, as we age, because uh, you know, I'm the last of the baby boomers, pretty much. Yeah, like we, we we'll all be so all this, all our generation is now going into. Yeah, it's our senior years. 
right? So how, how do we support each other? That's the reality of it. All of us are, are there or, or getting close to there. Um, how do we support each other and, and not uh, be victims of the violence and abuse and not tolerate it? Not, not tolerate it and make sure that we can support each other with that, right? So I would kind of put it to you to, to learn as much as you can. There are certainly opportunities <coughs> through the he local health committee. We have the resources through the Southwestern Coalition to End Violence. Um, there are people here that can deliver the workshops, I'm sure, or we can certainly come down and co-facilitate with people here in, in Burgio. If you want to become more informed as, the, as, your, as your senior organization, we know in Newfoundland we've got the fastest aging population, so most of us are, let's see, average age now, 45 in Newfoundland, 45, 50, yeah. So it's really, yeah, we're, we're, we're the aging population, you know, so we're it. We are, the, we are the majority of the people now, the, right, the older people. Um, so, to get informed as much as possible, and then how do we engage to seniors that are not getting out and, and make sure that they, I mean, there's nothing worse than that, just been in the whole, especially it's our winters, and our winters are horrible. I mean, you know, our cold, but to not be able to go to your seniors club or not be able to get out, right? So, to think about, or not be able to go to church. And that's one of the goals with uh, how we're doing this program is I envision, and I have set funding aside, is that after I go to each community, um, I wanted to bring two people from each community together with other with two from other communities um, to start a committee of that sort. So that would be the Halloween committee. But they would, they would reach out to everybody. Mm -hmm. But to learn this information so that in their community they're known to our membership that those are the people that they can go to for information or you know if they have a question um, a couple of our members here yeah. in Virgil would have those answers and be able to say okay you need to go talk to Kelly with help or yeah. you know maybe Kelly has more information for you but so that's one of the goals is to bring uh, 10 people together um, to form a committee to have the capacity yeah. to learn this information, to be able to present it, or you know, to go into a senior's home who's housebound yeah. and say, you know, you know, here's some information that we shared, here are some very important numbers, if anything happens, here are other numbers if you just want to talk to someone. Yeah. And I think that's that's really what you're what you're doing is, is you know being able to reach out to people, have that and you you don't ever have to feel like when someone calls the community education network, whether it's Crane or me or anybody else, they call. It's not like we have to have all the answers, but what our role is, is to put people in touch with someone who can help them. So our job is to know a little bit, right, about everything, and to say, you know, just hang on, you know, I'm going to get, to not have this recording on the phone when you call, because there's nothing worse than that, and being passed around to five different people, right, I'll get that information, what exactly is, right, is your need, and then put you in touch with the right person, um, so that's really, you know, that's, that's a piece of it. But also, you know, I think um, if we haven't had the opportunity to learn about all the different types of abuse and what we can do, right, and strategies for our communities and how we can work, certainly the Respect the Aging Workshops are a place to start and Seniors Clubs can sponsor those. We did in, right, we did it in Stephenville with, right, with our seniors group there so you can, you can actually say, yeah, we'd like to have that and for an hour and a half get together have some cookies, have a lunch, have a little bit of, I always say, you know, have lunch, have a little bit of fun. It's a heavy topic at times, it's not, you know, but you can do that and then, okay, we'll be the, we'll be the leaders in our community to, to ensure, you know, with the leaders as, because, you know, guys, as seniors, if we don't look after ourselves, no one, no one else is, right? So we really have to take care of each other, take care of ourselves and take care of each other. Um, I really think that's really important. And then knowing, like we've got, and we did bring the little cards because you're a big St. George card, but we've got the little cards with all the emergency services on that. So it's just a little wallet size card that opens up, um, and just it, like every emergency number is on that if you needed if you needed to call. So you have that information. And if you know, depending on where you are in your life and how you know, you may like I said, use in a wheelchair, you may have uh, early onset Alzheimer's or dementia. Have, have an advocate. You need an advocate, you know, another senior or person that's going to be, you know, going to advocate for you and make sure 
that your your needs are met too. So those are some key things there. A couple of questions that we asked like when we had our respect aging conference, a couple of things. We asked the group, we did it in small groups, so we only have a small group here, but one of the questions that we asked, what do we need as we age to stay safe and well, and to stay safe and healthy? So what do we need as seniors, right? So just think about that for a second. What are some of the things that help us stay safe and well as we age? Any, anything come to mind? For me, it's staying active. Right? It's staying active, not only active, like physically active, but I mean like active in our community, like here at your seniors club, uh, in church, whatever, uh, if there's a fitness group, if there's whatever, card games, I don't, whatever, whatever you like, you know, whatever you like to do, but in your community, staying involved and staying connected and staying active, right, is probably one of the key, key things. and. Um, I find there's a big connection between seniors that are isolated and uh, violence and abuse. There's a big, that's probably the biggest connector there, right? If you are a senior that's, not that it can't happen, but quite often if you're a senior that's out and about and engaged and active and talking with other seniors and you have a support network, then if something's happening at home or something's happening that you're not comfortable, you know, you'll chat about that. Right? Somebody, will recognize, Somebody will recognize it. Like people had talked mm -hmm. about it. You know, I got this odd phone call from right from, and it was you know scammer. Like what do you right? What do you think about this? I mean, it was poor. It was on uh, one senior lost two hundred thousand dollars every like every their whole life savings. Whole life savings. savings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cruel. It's cruel, right? So you know, but because they had no one to talk, right? No one to talk to. There wasn't any family member there. His daughter, when his daughter found out, of course it was too late. They had already scammed them. Um, and they're pretty, they're pretty forceful. Yeah, they're pretty forceful on the phone. Yeah, don't care the age. Yeah. So, you know, think about that. What do we need as we, as we age to stay safe and well? That's the same for everybody. It's not, it's not, it's not a whole lot of difference. You know, there's not a whole lot of difference in what I need to stay safe and well and what I do, right? Most of us are pretty similar. Right? It might be some little differences because I like, maybe I like to go swimming, I like to walk my dog, someone else likes to do something else, you know? That, those differences, but what, the, the need to stay connected, and that's the one thing we often lose as we get older, that connectedness. We're not getting out and about as much, we're not, especially after we retire, you know, those types of things are, so that's probably our biggest, our biggest thing. So you guys as leaders in your community, Right? How do we help other people stay connected? Because you're here today, because you're connected. Right? That's why you're here today. So. And that's one of the big things that we're noticing in the communities, you know, as the elders or the seniors are getting older, you know, their friends are passing away. So, mm -hmm. you know, their social group that they're used to hanging out with at bingo or car games or yeah. whatever, they're no longer there. So now they're like, it kind of defeats the purpose of going because they don't have that connection. Yeah. And it's kind of hard at that age, they think, to yeah. infiltrate another like friendship. Another group, group. yeah. It's hard at any age, really. Yeah. <laughs> you just look at it, you know, yeah. Yeah, right? It's hard to do that at any, at, at any age. But you know, something what I really understand, especially as we get older, most of us have the same need to stay connected. Mm -hmm. And it's very, sometimes it's very easy to, right, to, to make those connections. And we need to, I mean, uh, the other thing, as, 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 as seniors, as we get older, we, we need to demand that we have those services and opportunities. We really need to collectively say that you know, we need our places to do and things to do and meaningful things to be able to you know, volunteer work with your local Lions Club. I mean, oh my goodness, our Lions Club is a fancy member of the Lions Club. My goodness, how old is Dave now? He must be big. Dave's 74. Four. I've got, I've got my, one of my members just turned, we just celebrated his 90th birthday. Yeah. And he's probably one of the most active in my club. Yeah. And they're just totally like, and, and giving back is just, just yeah. well, I just, just I have the stamina when, when we're doing our community uh, lunches or breakfasts or pancake whatever, or doing different events. How can they stay in the kitchen for three hours on their feet? I'm exhausted, like three or four hours, just totally. And they'll come back to bingo that night. Yeah. <laughs> But I really, like the topic, you know, the topic is a little bit heavy. I, I think the, the socialization, I mean, you're saying go all the way to, oh my God, it's like a ride to Calway, and I'd like this. I mean, I, I'm just, just exhausted just thinking about it. I mean, I drive to, I do a fair minute highway driving, but that is, 
but the, the other pieces I think that we can do as seniors is to, you know, I've, like I've worked, because I've worked with Victim Services and John Howard Society, and I've had the opportunity to be very aware of the issues, yeah. to, to make ourselves aware and understanding and to reserve that judgment. How do I help someone that's in the, at that situation? And if I'm in that situation myself, how do I help? So by understanding that more, it's not an easy topic necessarily. And it can be because none of us have got through life and to be as old as we are without some scars and without, and we've all have our own stories and our own trauma and our own different situations to handle. But by becoming informed and understanding that, then we're able to help ourselves and we talk about it. So the fact, if there is, you know, if Mary's at home and uh, being abused or taken advantage of in any way, oh my goodness, you know, they've talked about this at the seniors club. Maybe I can reach out to one of my friends or one of my acquaintances that I know there. And she seems like a really helpful lady. I'll go and talk to her or him and talk to them about it. You know, and they are able to reach out. Um, if you're at that comfort level and if you want, you know, I think that's a, just a little step deeper because I mean one of the things Kelly you said is, is sometimes all of us have a difficulty talking about this topic, but for those of us who are 50 plus, you did not talk about that when you were younger, period. We didn't talk about anything, right? Right? Didn't talk about your period. <laughs> You know, that's the reality of it. You didn't have anything. <laughs> and forget it, wet dreams. <laughs> forget it. <laughs> forget it. That. You're not going to talk about anything. Forget it. You know, you just talk about it. And that's the, that's, the, that's the reality of how we grew up. So how do now we, we become the leaders and the people that, are, that people are going to reach out to, you know, for that help and for that support? Well, one thing my grandmother yeah. always said was, I don't want to be a burden on anybody. Yeah. I don't know how many times I heard her say that. So I said, man, you're not being a burden. You're family. What's, what can we yeah. do for you, right? And that's one thing, like you said, it's, it's reaching out and surrounding yourself and making sure that you're connected with those that you can either help yourself or can help you in a situation, right? Because that goes both ways, right? Because right. we've we got people to reach out to when we need that's the help. Right. And support. We're all going to be there. We all have been there. We're all going to be there someday that we're not going, right? That we're all going to need, at times in our life, we're going to need help, whether it be for sickness, like, you know, mentally or physically, or typically that you just talked about your brother, right? Your brother, right. like grieving, and really, right? That hard time. Yeah, so people reach out and support you. But then there's times then when we can, when we're informed, right? And we're, we're in our community, because you know guys best, we're in your community. Who can I call? and get this person some help or get some help for myself. So that's the other thing that, that connected here in the community. And Virgil is a lovely community. And I'm, I'm not just saying it because I'm here, it is just a lovely. I love going to the school because we, like, we have our preschool program there and our family resource program and our community youth network and Gary Kelly has worked with us. And it's just, it's just so, uh, right? It's just such a really, really, really nice community. Um, and you know, really supportive. And I know you have a history of people working away and coming back and those types of right type, types of things. But it, it does it does have a really there's a really good strong sense of community here in Mauritio. I uh, I certainly have a sense of that, right? So I think you're starting off really good like that. So those are the things that we can offer and certainly probably with the health committee, you know, Kathy, I know Kathy's off right now on sick leave, but we can certainly you know, the, the one good thing about it, the, the workshops are here in the, the they're already prepared mm -hmm. and are online available on Right? So there's something that you're able to offer and there's little activities there. So that was just one of the things like, what do we need to age and stay safe? safe. So when you're in, say you had a group of 20 people, you get in a small group, you talk about how that can, you know, what can help and what can we do to help others who may be experiencing violence and abuse. So we understand all the different types, right? What can we do? Then we'll do a little direct group. What are the community services that are available in the Burgio area? Mm -hmm. Right? What's here? Who can, right? And that's exactly what we were planning yeah. once we got everybody formed in yeah. the community. We were going to go to Rocky Harbor, or we are going to go to Rocky Harbor for two or three days. Yes. So we were kind of going to do a train the trainer situation yes, yeah. with it's this program. Right. Yeah. And uh, at that time, everyone around the table would say, okay, we're in this town, we're in this district, what are all our important phone numbers, who yeah. are all our important contacts? So it would be help with you guys and yes, yeah. different people to reach out to. reach out to there, yeah. So you're able to do that. And, and because I am a facilitator of different, of the respect agent, but as well as like parenting programs and that, quite often how we do that is 
we just actually do it the way that you would do it. No one gets up there like, and stands up and preaches. It's just you actually do the activities. So you work through the activities. So when you become a facilitator of this discussion, it's just that. It's the same thing. You're facilitating discussion. You know, you're going, you're walking through the questions. It's not about getting up pre preaching. We have like some of the activities that we set up here. And we did this before, um, and, I, and I knew we didn't have a lot of time, but we actually do all. We have things laminated. <laughs> we do the power and control wheel, for example. So we're putting all the things. So we have had those. Like we have those laminated and the different types of abuse. But then we'd have you work, everybody would work in small groups and we'd talk about emotional abuse. So what are, what's emotional abuse and what are some of the examples of emotional abuse? Right, so we actually do that around the room so there's activities involved in that. So you have an understanding of that and then the people you're able then to facilitate a discussion around that. But you do that by, by example, right? So you actually, so when someone is doing it, they go through all this and we have all kinds of little activities that we, we do. Um, and we don't have a lot of time. If we had all day, we could possibly, right? It's really great to see stuff here. Provide information. When we talk, that's the, that's what's sort of the last part. Provide information. So where are the key sources, right? So we, so that's all around your room when you're doing that in a very. Right? Now it's getting too hot. <laughs> because no happy medium here at all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's what we like. So what do we need uh, to stay safe as we uh, as we age? To stay safe and well, because I think our physical and mental health is really important too. And as we get older, yeah, we just don't, doesn't uh, things don't quite uh, work the same way. Uh, and what can we do to help others who may be experiencing violence and abuse? So we help others by being as informed as we possibly can. And that's what right the activities in the Respect Aging uh, Trainers Guide. So it's really important, I, I would just say, like, as a person who facilitates, it is very important how you, you have experienced facilitators who get people involved in that discussion. So like I said, if we had more time, I'm doing a little bit more talking today than we usually do, but generally it would be if we had a larger group, we'd just be doing the group work and a lot of discussion <coughs> about it, and we gave it to your community. Like, that's because you're even here, and you are the leaders in your community. Uh, so I don't know if there's any other questions or comments. We're uh, the health community is right here, right here in Virgil, and, and they're a really great connection. Um, and Southwestern is just the, the larger, the larger organization that can get more resources and information and training to um, health community. Yeah, it's a full set. Yeah, it's a full set. Awesome. All the. Yeah. I think that's why I like our stress so much because we had a sit down supper, and we yeah. had five year olds to eight year olds. Yeah, right. right? But that's that that was was ideal, Kelly. That's yeah. an example. Well, they don't want to cook supper for themselves, so they came out here. Yeah. Uh, Travis mm -hmm. Stopper playing music. Yeah. Oh, okay. Intergenerational. Yeah. See, right from this yeah. a really good well, point. Well, yeah. then you, well, it goes back to when you were saying about their friends are, are, are passing on and they're left alone. Mm -hmm. But when you do the intergenerational, yeah. they're, yeah. they're having those connections awesome of, of that, that support, right? Yeah. That, that network. But even things that we can do. Is for a month or something like that, or grandparent? And I would even see like a visit to uh, uh, seniors coming to the family resource program and reading a book. Uh, yeah. So I always call it grand friends as teaching partners, like yeah. where they'd actually read a book uh, to uh, to the ones that are there or do an activity. Yeah. So. I seen a thing online the other day. I thought it was a phenomenal um, idea. It was actually a preschool in a senior's home. Oh, yeah. I saw that. I said, I said, that's where I must go when I grow yeah. up. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's what I did. That's what preschool was too. Actually, in the seniors' yeah. Yeah. residence homes. So they had, you know, the young one, they were basically grandparents. Yeah. And they got the older ones more active. Yeah. 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 And they would so go, it made them a sort of three and four year olds going to preschool. Yeah. 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 Like, we should all have gone that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it teaches so much mm -hmm. to little ones, and it's, I mean, it's a joy, right? I mean, for most people, she'll, yeah, children just kind of lighten up the. And the other thing that they they also yeah like uh, animals. I know when my mother in law was in the uh, uh, seniors home uh, a few years back, uh, she was in the the highest level of care because she had dementia. But we have a dog who's very very friendly. He's a setter lab mix, and we would bring the dog in. Mm -hmm. And people, you could tell people that had dogs. Yes. Of course, 
right? So they would they would allow because he was very friendly and very right? going room to room, and they people would just yeah. lighten up like you wouldn't. Right. And these were people with dementia. I have a friend who does that program with the therapy dog, brings me to the hospital and yes. uh, seniors yeah. complex and everything there. Yeah. And she just absolutely loves the program. It, yeah. And more than that is so good. I'm just I'm just picturing there's so many wonderful things you can do because even for seniors that are can't get out of the home. To, for people to be able to, to go in. So for those of us who are a bit younger, and like you said, the more active seniors, to be able to have a visit with them a couple of times a week. Like just to know, to be able to identify who those seniors are, to be able to go by for a cup of tea and a chat, you know, a few times a week. So that be able to reach out. So Edinburgh is a small enough community to be able to, to do that. So I'm sure you've got some wonderful stuff on the go, but it's, in, you know, it's really, really endless what you can do. And of course, Southwestern and Health Community can support those endeavors, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting us. Uh -huh.